Hello everyone, this episode is sponsored by italki. If you're looking for a one-to-one teacher to practice your English speaking or to work on specific areas of your English, then check out italki. It's a really great and simple way to find one-to-one teachers or conversation partners. Um, you can check out their profiles, look at introductory videos, and when you've found the person that's right for you, it's very easy to arrange to have some lessons. And it's all done on Skype. It's very simple. You just sit at home and have your English lesson on Skype. I mean, we do everything on Skype. You can do everything on video conference these days, can't you? Like the other day, I had a doctor's appointment um, via a video conferencing platform. Um, So it's kind of becoming more and more normal. So why not have your English lessons and conversations uh, that way as well? And when you buy some talking time, italki will send you a voucher uh, for a free lesson. To get the offer, go to teacherluke.co.uk slash talk or click an italki logo on my website. You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. Hello there. How are you? Welcome back to the podcast. I hope you're basically doing okay wherever you are in the world. Walking around, on public transport, driving, sitting somewhere, lying down, whatever your current body position, welcome. Here's a new episode. And in this one, I'm joined once again by Amber Minogue and Paul Taylor. It's been a while since Amber and Paul were on the podcast. Is it nearly a year? Anyway, for those of you who don't know, Amber and Paul have been two of the most frequent guests on this podcast. They've got their own jingle, their own nicknames, the Pod Pals. You see, pals, you see, that's Paul, Amber and Luke. You see, the Pod Pals, the talkative trio, the tangential three. And they've got their own fan club of sorts in the form of listeners who often say that the Amber and Paul episodes are their favourite. Um, I met both Amber and Paul on the English stand-up comedy scene in Paris back in the early days when the only English nights were being run by Sebastian Marx and Robert Hain. We sort of teamed up because we're all Brits and I used to have them on the podcast to play vocabulary games and have rambling conversations on the terrace of my old apartment. Amber made her first appearance in episode 161, She's Having a Baby, and Paul first appeared in episode 158, 158, which was called A Cup of Christmas Tea with Paul Taylor. So Amber had her baby, little Hugo, and there have been various funny stories of what he's got up to. Meanwhile, Paul became an overnight sensation with his comedy video about la bise, the French custom of kissing people when you meet them. His video went viral on YouTube and picked up over a million views in a few days. Also, he um, quit his job, his good job at Apple to to become a stand-up comedian full-time. And so his video ended up on the BBC's website and stuff like that. Then Canal Plus, the TV company in France, offered him a TV show and he went for it bringing some of his comedy friends with him to help write the show. So Amber and I helped Paul a bit with his popular show called What the Fuck France. Yes, and you can have a show called What the Fuck France on television in France. So that, along with his first one-man show, which was called Hashtag Franglais, uh, that, those things have uh, made Paul something of a celebrity in France. And now it's not uncommon for him to be recognised and stopped in the street for a selfie with a fan. Often when we're out getting lunch, people will stop and say hello to him, which is quite funny. Amber and I also have been lucky enough to be invited by Paul to perform with him on big shows uh, in Paris at venues including the Bataclan and Casino de Paris, and they're both like really big theatres. On the podcast, Amber is famous for having a lovely voice, and Paul is famous for having a funny and infectious laugh. Amber is also known to be the cleverest of the three, probably because of her excessive reading and listening of uh, BBC Radio 4. She's also something of a history buff when it comes to Paris, and she does tours here, as well as a, a podcast about Paris called Pan Am Podcast. 
Amber is also quite strategic when it comes to playing games. Paul seems to be less good at the games, and it appears that he doesn't even know his own language sometimes. He's a very good impressionist and often gets angry about life in general. Both Amber and Paul speak French fluently. Anyway, we don't uh, get to have Amber and Paul on the podcast that often, so the tradition has become to have one catching up episode in which we do just that, find out what's been going on with them since the last time we spoke. And so there's the usual mix of stories about general life, as well as some stuff about language, some bits about kids learning English, and also the usual bits of inside showbiz information as we continue to follow Paul behind the scenes in his career. So there's that catching up episode, and then if there's time, I usually try to uh, get them to record another one. And we did uh, just that this time. I managed to record two episodes with Amber and Paul, so the second one will be coming soon. I won't tell you what that's about or what happens in it yet, but it will arrive quite soon after this one. But now, without any further ado, let's catch up with Amber and Paul. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on another podcast. Paul's a very funny boy. His laugh I very much enjoy. Amber's got a lovely voice. If I could choose an accent, hers will be my choice. Yeah. Shall we start? Mm. Let's, let's start. do it. Yes, let's okay. Let's do it. Okay then. Well, we'll just let's just start. Can we have the jingle? Yeah. So there'll be a jingle, and then play it. Be- I want it. I need to play the jingle to get in the mood. Amber, Come on, Luke. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. <laughs> Amber and Paul Acapella. are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on another podcast. Paul's a very funny boy. <laughs> His, His laugh, laugh I very much enjoy. <laughs> Amber's got a lovely voice. If I could choose an accent, hers would be my choice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now Hello. We're in it. Hello, you two. Hello. How are you? Good. All right. Yeah. Good. Paul, where are we? We are. <laughs> it's always me that's doing the situation you stuff. You set the scene. Uh, we're, the situation. <laughs> we are not sitting in your apartment for once, Luke Thompson. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are at the lovely Amber Minogue's house, new house, house. in uh, in the suburbs of Paris. It's a house, ladies and gentlemen. Sort of a house. Well, it's mean? got more than one level, so technically it's a house. Yeah. What, 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 right. Wait, what's the difference between a house and sort of a house? Oh, God. I don't know because <laughs> the ground floor we don't have that. That's a. It's that's true. An atelier. To, yeah. What? You don't have the ground. You don't have no. a ground floor. Your no. house doesn't have a ground floor. It, it, it does, but that's not our ground floor. How do you get into the house then? Go up the stairs. Walk up the stairs. Oh right, <laughs> <laughs> stairs on the. Yeah. Outside. All right. Fair enough. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It's a duplex. Yeah. Go for that. But okay. So you've moved. We moved. We've moved to the burbs. What's that? We've crossed the periphery. The no, suburbs. you've got to explain burbs. I think the suburbs that is like outside well, suburbs, of the suburbs. city. We the know suburbs, now. Yeah. No, we know. Yeah. Suburbs. Suburbs. Yeah. Okay, so you've made a big step of moving outside the Boulevard Peripherique, which is the Ooh, road, the, club. the road that yes. goes around the edge of Paris. So you're no longer living in Paris. No. Okay. How does how does it feel? It feels if it is hard. Is it? Yes. Oh, it can't be that hard. It it's tr- no, it is. It's surprisingly, like a, it is. It is. It just I feel like. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm not Parisian. My, my identity's gone. I was just saying to Sarah the other day, the only thing I had was I live in Paris. And now yeah, that's I, right. I don't even have that. Oh, that was a fun joke <laughs> that you used to say. When you, was that your joke? Yeah, yeah. Where you Got, used to just be like... Uh, you, come on, Amber, do it on the podcast since you've moved out of Paris now. Well, can you or can't you? You just go back to England and be like, oh, what do you do? It's like, I live in Paris. And they're like, oh, you don't need to have a job. It's just, you live in Paris. Like, when was it? 15 years ago? 16, 17 years ago? 18 years ago. You moved here uh, for a weekend. I just, I mean, yeah, I moved to Paris for a weekend and I just thought I'd stay for a little bit. And I kind of thought, I kind of thought it'd be really, it'd sound cool at parties when I'd go home. Like, oh yeah, I lived in Paris. Um, But I just, I never got anything together yeah. i just never got it together um and now and when, then, you, when you go back you're like oh what do you do now and like, oh, i'm a journalist i'm a doctor and what do you do i live in paris that is my job and everyone's really impressed they're like oh my god paris yeah. you know and it sounds so amazing and that's it then i don't need to justify the fact that i have nothing else in my life <laughs> <laughs> and now i don't even have that so what's then, what's going to fill that void of of uh it, well you know what's going to fill the void of not living in Paris anymore. Uh, having a second baby, Luke. Yeah. Yes. This is so. the other thing that uh, listeners obviously can't 
tell oh, yeah, that, that Amber I'm, is as big as a whale. I'm about that would be ready. Funny, it? If you could tell by the voice, if your yeah. voice changed, you sound what pregnant. Would... <laughs> you sound pregnant. Oh, she sounds very pregnant. What would that sound like if someone sounded pregnant? I feel like it would be more like a a, a deeper <laughs> voice, a deeper voice. Yeah, a deeper. Mm. I don't know why. Like in my mind, it's it sounds like an ultrasound, like a. <laughs> oh, so deeper, but but less clarity. I was just thinking about like hearing a conversation through a closed door. You know when right. you hear. It, when it's a bit muffled. Muffled. That's muffled is the word I was looking for originally. Much well nice. done, Paul. You found a word. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, so if uh, a, a pregnant, if pregnancy changed your voice, it would make it sound deeper and muffled. So it'd be like, so how are you, Amber? <laughs> <laughs> wow, you, you're really, you're really pregnant. pregnant. Really yeah. pregnant. <laughs> As the more pregnant you get, the sort of more muffled you become. How pregnant are you then? I am eight and a half I'm in the ninth month Ooh. it's like uh, the la- the, I've got two weeks left you're in the drop zone you're I'm in, in the, drop, the zone. drop zone any <laughs> moment any moment it could happen imagine if it happened on the podcast folks that would be that would be unbelievable Ooh. wouldn't it yeah okay no. alright so, and well I mean you know what should I ask now Paul what, what, what am I supposed to ask you now I mean like for the podcast should I, should I ask you how's it going or do you know if it's a boy or a girl? I don't think you fully set the scene to I just didn't. describe how amazing my new house is. Okay, yeah, we didn't dwell we didn't on that up. enough. So the house is fantastic and there's so living, much more space. Yeah, because yep. although living in the suburbs is rough, the yeah. reason you move to the suburbs is because you have more space. Yes. And a sunny terrace, which we can one day do a podcast on and maybe burn ourselves. So listen, yes. <laughs> like the old days. Like, yeah. the, like good the good old, old days. days. It used to be a tradition for us to sit outside and get exposed to direct sunlight. Um, and in fact, I am being exposed to direct sunlight through the window of the, of the door to the terrace. So I feel like even your terrace is so big, it even sort of floods the inside of your well, flat. Well, it's bigger than, than our old flat, apparently. The in- I don't see it, but like when, I'm at, when, I, when I'm there, I don't feel like there's more space than my old flat, no. but, but apparently there is. Yeah, yeah. 44 square metres. 44 well, square metres. Well, the same meters. size, actually, then. Our, our old apartment in Paris was 44 before we moved out to the Burbs as well. Yes, we're all living in the burbs. I feel like when we say terrace, it's this is the French word, isn't it? Yeah. What would we say in I don't English? Know. Do not, we say terrace? It's no. not a balcony. No. Is it a patio? What I think is we it? say patio. Yeah, kind of a rooftop or a, a veranda. A, no. no, that's like yeah. the thing. It goes round the edge of the house, isn't an it? Outside bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, the thing an outside is that weird space. Thing is I found this out the other day. Veranda in French, veranda, is mm. a conservatory. So when we were talking in French, no. Uh, a veranda. V- veranda in French, if you're saying that. In, in my mind, it was a veranda. Like, my mum is Irish, and she says veranda yeah. for out- any outdoor space. We've right? got yeah. to define it, though, because I think that a veranda is like those American houses in the south where they've got like a, a whole sort of uh, platform around the edge of the house. Oh, really? That you can sit on. Okay, my mum. And that you'd sit on it in a, in a, a rocking chair with a glass, with a glass of uh, iced tea. Yeah, it's the, from the film Forrest Gump. No, a porch. Uh, oh, that's a porch. No, 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 you no, might no, be no. right, Amber. No, no, no. No, a porch is is just a covered front door area. So you, when you go into the, when you open the front door, you enter the porch, and there's maybe a space for shoes. some some umbrellas and shoes and stuff. And yeah. then you go into the house, but it's like a little mini closed off area. No, you're thinking. Uh, so think, a veranda goes right, all the way Amber. around. No, 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 I think, no, 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 no. You know, you know, like imagine your leans, right? The 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 the, the and imagine like every, yeah, like in the south of, south of the US when they're like, oh, hi there, hey, I'll do it. And they're sitting, up, sit on the veranda and no, w- and on the whittlesome. porch. They sit on the porch. I feel they sit on the porch. But I think the thing is, the problem is that in England, there's so many different rooms. Because, you know, you've got your, your, your day room, the drawing room, the, really? the mud room. Yeah, posh, posh places. Posh people. Yeah. Yeah, posh posh, people. It's, sort of... it's like the sort of sitting room, living room, you know. Breakfast room, all the different rooms. I yeah. think it's a uh, but lost normal in people translation. don't have that. But normal no. people could have a veranda, and it's so in French a veranda is a, is a it's conservatory. It's it's an extra bit that's covered yeah. by glass. Yeah. But conservatoire doesn't f- work because that's no. go on. Can I just, can wait, just clarify. Come on, English so, wait, teacher. Wait, wait so you're saying first of all that veranda in French is what we call a conservatory in, in, in English, British English, which is an extension to your house, which is mainly made of glass. Right? It's an extension. That's a conservatory. It's, it's, it's essentially a closed space, but yeah. with glass walls and ceilings. Yeah. So you can, it feels like you're outside, but you're actually inside. Which is a very big thing in the UK. If you like, a lot of people will extend their houses and build a conservatory yeah. onto the house so that they can conserve sort of, themselves. Yeah, they can be warm and almost outside. Yeah. So they kind of get sunlight and it's kind of warm, but without actually being yeah. outside. And in France, they call that veranda. Which and in is English, veranda. it's a conservatory. So which what is makes a veranda? Because it's got ver. Oh. Yeah. 
and right. there means glass in French. Right, yes. right. That works. Um, but anyway, veranda in English, this is the question, uh, looking at the Collins Dictionary. Um, Who's Colin? <laughs> I actually... Have you seen which headphones I'm wearing, Paul? Phillips. I'm wearing, I've got Phillips headphones. Yeah, they're not Phillips, they're mine. <laughs> yeah. I would say... Wait, wasn't that... Uh, who's, what advert was that? They're not... No, it was... They're oh, they're not Terry's. Terry's they're, they're mine. mine. Terry's orange chocolate. So the, the, the chocolate orange advert. Yeah, they're not... They're, the company. I feel like we've done the Phillips joke before in this well, podcast. We've done it before. Of course we have. That's a, it's a callback. Um, is it? Yes, it is. Kind of like the Russian joke. Oh, oh there oh, it is. Oh, shit. Oh, dear. No, we won't be explaining that. Thank you. <laughs> if you'd like to know what that means, just check out uh, my YouTube channel... For the video go back the ro- years you need to go back about five years in this podcast <laughs> so, alright go what's veranda so according to Colin uh, a veranda <laughs> is a porch or portico alright sometimes partly enclosed along the outside of a building sometimes partly enclosed along the outside of a building okay so or a porch so veranda porch it said it's a, it's a porch yeah but for me a porch is not all the way along the outside of a building so okay a porch according to Colin is a sheltered area at the entrance to a building, it has a roof and sometimes has walls. So it's just the bit over the door. Okay. That's the okay. porch, all right. right? So you But a veranda right. is a thing that goes all the way around the outside of the building. It's like a porch that goes all the way around. Okay. Yeah. I imagine, imagine in US, all the, 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 the wording is completely different. Yeah. All of these mean different things yeah. totally. So, yeah. uh, I feel I've heard them say porch. Yeah, okay. Porch. All right, yeah. then. Let's or, move on. Anyway, so the fact is you've moved to uh, the suburbs, which you yep. feel like is kind of a step down lifestyle-wise, but the reason you've done it is because you've got all this extra space, including a lovely uh, porch slash veranda slash um, uh, uh, patio, terrace, patio slash terrace. I, would, I think patio. Yes. Can you look up patio and terrace? <laughs> oh, that, no, because I, I feel like these are... T- what did I say the other day in one of my videos on my two minutes with Taylor situation on YouTube. You were in a cave. Yeah, I was in a cave and people fucking went mental in the comments. I mean, two people did. Explain. Yeah, so I I, I do these videos uh, called two minutes with Taylor. It's basically, I just, I I take my phone out and for two minutes talk about what's going on that day and also answer any questions that may have been asked on the previous day. Mm -hmm. And so the other day I was at a comedy club and I was in the downstairs basement of the comedy club. And in France, the basement, we call it La Cave, the cave. Um, And so I was like, oh, I'm at the cave of a comedy club and I just carried on going. But in English, a cave is... Well... Not the same thing. Well, it's not the same thing, but it also makes sense because, I mean, the back cave... Yeah. ...is a cave. But normally we think of a cave as being a... A wild place, mm. a place yeah, where bats like, or not bears, a ma- not a man-made not place. Like, yeah, fair like enough. A, yeah, yeah. So it's the ba- that, it was the basement. I should have said the basement. That's why people started to. They were like, "Oh yeah, you don't speak English oh, anymore." Blah, blah. Your English is becoming Frenchified because yeah. you're using the word cave. But yeah. I mean, they're just taking the piss. Yeah, yeah just like the word I used earlier on at lunch. It was it ended up being funny. Yeah, what did you say? I don't know. D- uh, you depla- you de-placed. deplaced it's yourself. Deplaced myself. So so <laughs> Amber deplaced herself from Paris to to the yeah, suburbs because in French the verb se déplacer, which is a reflexive verb, means to move. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, is that, it's not, not the déménager? That's to move. Move but house. To, that's to move house, but se déplacer means to move physically in general. Okay. So you would say like the, 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 the people of, who are doing the riots and the protests, uh, you would say, I deplaced myself into Paris to take part in the protest. I see. Literally in French. Je me suis déplacé pour uh, manifester. I, I, there's probably a better f- English word than move. I... Um, let's see. Travelled. Uh, Travelled uh, might be yeah. a, might be the the thing. I'll look it up in word reference because that's went, my favourite. I went, I went to Paris. Because well, you can say I just suis allé, but there's a. I there's made my way to Paris. I uh, um, déplacé, move <laughs> is yeah. the first shift. Move, 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 shift, shift. budge. You kind um, of get this feeling of like moving yourself. Right, yeah. Okay. Like you. Yeah. From well. from one point to another point. Yeah. And yeah. and un, it's, so it's unlike People the word. People often ask. Uh, in French, how do you deplace yourself? How do you get about? How do you get about? Like by car, by metro, by I bus. See. I see. Tu te déplaces comment? In English, we'd say, how do you get around? Yeah. For example, how yeah. do you get this about? Is, this is interesting how English and French are different in this way. That French, they've got like these big verbs for things, and in English, we've got some big verbs for things too. But also, we've got these like little verbs, yeah. 
Move. which don't really mean anything, yeah. like get. You know, it just doesn't right. really... I mean, it's, yeah. it means obtain or receive or something, yeah. but we add it to prepositions and yeah, other little get words. Get in, get out, and get suddenly, off. yeah, you've got like a whole, whole world of yeah. different expressions. Yeah, like, like to get off with somebody. Yeah. You'd have to... You'd like... It, it, that would be that's such a specific phrase that no one would understand if mm. they hadn't mm. been specifically been to Britain because to and get off, off with, with somebody someone. in the US even if you say that if I say to somebody in America like oh I got off with this girl they're like what does that mean yeah mm. they've no like it's yeah. it's such a very specific British to get off with someone by the way ladies and gentlemen is to well how would you define it Amber snog yeah <laughs> <laughs> to use another British word I was going to say they're the not going to know snog either if they don't know get off with someone they might not it know it means a kiss but it's sort of like Smoochy kiss. A French kiss. Bit of an erotic kiss. A French kiss. kiss with tongues. <laughs> How many tongues? At least two. <laughs> At least two. two. And you start from the left. <laughs> so yeah, in, in Paris, but in the other parts of the country, maybe they start from the other side. So, um, okay, so Amber's moved. Uh, house yep. and the place is wonderful there's loads of space there's this fantastic outside space as well yep. and uh, you've got a, a, a staircase in your house staircase yes exactly it's very exciting yeah okay it's so big we've bought a tumble dryer oh what? what's what's a tumble dryer <laughs> after you wash your clothes you can put them in and it's where they dry it tumbles them dry mm. And uh, it's the first time in my life that I've had a tumble dryer and uh, I'm very excited. And that's how sad, how sad I've become that I'm like, wow, a tumble dryer. Well, at least you're excited by something, you know, it could be worse. <laughs> are, 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 are you ecstatic? Because there's a lot of static when you tumble dry. Oh, 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 there he is. Oh, Taylor's back. Oh. <laughs> well, it would be more like this. So I got rid of my uh, tumble dryer because I couldn't deal with all of the uh, electrical charges on the on my sweaters. Yeah. So I got rid of it. So and now I'm ecstatic. Uh, that, that's it. There we go. See? Yep. 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 Well done. Ex- ex- well done. Ecstatic. I don't know. I didn't. I don't think it deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> Although I mean, I did have a nightmare that my father came round and broke my tumble dryer, and I was furious. Whoa. Okay. So you had a nightmare, you, you, uh, Amber. We've never really talked about your father. No, well, he came around, broke my tumble dryer, and I was—I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it's like what's what? How dare you? <laughs> this has become the most important thing in your life now. <laughs> you're having dreams about people coming and damaging it. I know people from your history. Look, when you're about to have a baby, a tumble dryer is. Oh yeah, it's going to change my life. No, I I, I understand. You both understand. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Especially Addie refuses to buy a tumble dryer. She refuses to buy she a tumble hates, dryer. Tr- what she is she? Hates, a martyr? She, she's a mentalist, uh, <laughs> my wife, and so she uh, she refuses to uh, tumble dry anything because I think. I, I understand where she comes from, where like it ruins your clothes a bit. It's, instead but of baby's air clothes are ruined anyway. Yeah, Who cares about baby exactly. clothes? Exactly, because they say it shrinks. I'm just like, it don't matter. They're tiny. Yeah, they're, they're already small. They're already yeah. how tiny. small can but they then, get? Like, people in America, they no one air dries anything in the US. Everyone has a tumble because they got so much so space. Much space, yeah. Uh, and but I, I feel like they. They buy clothes. They they've already got it down. Like I've got a mate of mine who who knows exactly like the brand of clothes that he buys on purpose, like one size bigger, so that when he tumble dries it, it fits him per and it, it fits him perfectly. Wait, so he he he, he uh, takes into account the fact that his tumble dryer is going to shrink the clothes. Yep. So he buys clothes like a few sizes too big. Exactly. Knowing that the tumble dryer is yeah. going to shrink them to the optimal. Yeah. Exactly. S- size. Wow. That's and he's just- gone through. You know, like you know like everyone goes through different brands and you go which one fits me better you know yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you settle on your brand right. yeah. of clothing um, wow yeah. yeah interesting stuff okay well okay. welcome to the new that's I, where we I, are luke to answer your question from wel- half an hour ago can i welcome you into your own yes. new house <laughs> welcome, welcome to your own new house thank you it's very nice um I, and well you're about to give birth but i mean you know it's not more nothing more we did a whole episode about that um about birth about yeah, having about a baby being pregnant. Yeah. Uh, episode 180 something? something yeah it was from when oh, you wow. were about like this time but with the first child six years ago six yeah. years ago That's yeah crazy so listeners you can always go back and listen to that one if you'd like to hear amber's uh debut. account account and debut on the podcast yeah. uh, all about being pregnant and, and all that stuff um okay what else what else what else what else well so we're, we're basically catching up with each other which mm. is you know what we do in these episodes hold on a minute so it's the only time we see each other now yeah, I know. It's just like I used. Whereas this before, pod- we'd see each other at comedy clubs quite often, and so we'd catch up then, and then we'd actually, when we were on the podcast, we had other stuff to talk about. Yeah, but now it's, it's like it's that. like very, very difficult to 
not just arrange for us to get together to do a podcast, but actually to do the recording of the podcast because yeah. <laughs> we haven't seen each other for ages. It's very hard to like just actually talk about something else. We always end up like, so what's, what's been going on with you? Yeah. And then well, we poof, met up an hour later. We met up an hour and a half ago. Well, yeah. two hours now. So we had lunch. And so we caught up on yes. the comedy stuff that we like catching up on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've got the sort of the showbiz comedy um, industry stuff yeah, no probably out of the way. That, so but there, there will be some, because I'm going to ask you now the, the, the standard questions, which are, well, what are the things that we need to ask Paul about? We like to ask Paul about his career, about his exciting projects and what, what he's got going on. You are, at this point, you, you, um, let's see. Last time we spoke, you were just about to launch your new one-hour one man really show. I can't remember what the last yeah. time we spoke it was, was. It, 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 well, when did you on, start was October? it on the podcast yeah was uh, it? yeah mid, mid-October was when I, I, I did the work in progress August for the whole month of August yes yeah. um, and uh, then I started officially the show on the on the 18th of October I can tell you the last time you were on this podcast yeah uh, it was um, episode 617 we talked about sales and advertising and I would tell you when that was, but my <laughs> computer doesn't want to tell me because of inter- the internet. Blame. It's internet. Yeah. What did you just type? Paul Taylor. Hold, hold on. Don't start having a new conversation. I'm not. September. I'm not. So it was... Uh, okay, yeah. So it was a month before I started. It was the 26th of September, a month before you started. So Two weeks before I started. Yeah. yeah. So you, you, basically your situation was you just had a, a baby, yeah. you'd moved house, life was like really difficult. Yeah. And on top of it all, you had to write and then launch a new one-hour, one-man show after having had lots of success with the previous one. Hashtag Franglais. Um, and so uh, you've done it now, haven't you? Yeah. It's done, right? You're on the other side of it. Well... I mean, well, where are you now with it? You stopped I, doing I, it in I, Paris. I stopped doing it in Paris uh-huh. uh, two weeks ago. And my first tour date is the day after tomorrow in the Alps. So you're going on tour in France. Uh, yeah, I'm touring around France, uh, mainly f- most of France, and then um, other French-speaking places like Brussels, uh, Luxembourg, uh, Geneva. Okay. London. London, yeah, we haven't figured out the date yet, but it'll, London will be happening probably, it's either in April or May, I think, at the Leicester Square Theatre. Oh, cool. So that's exciting, because um, it's it, it's a decent size, I think it's like 400 uh, seats. Um I feel like I'm in the same place as I was when we last talked. Like, nothing's changed. No, you just managed to record and release your difficult second album, and, uh, and, it, and it was quite a kind of a hit. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. All right. The show's gone well, the, the, right? Okay, so the show's gone well. Like, I was worried about people not showing up uh, to the second one, um, and I was able to put the extracts of my first show, so uh, joke by joke, basically, on my YouTube channel. So there were 16 videos that came out. Uh, in 16 days because that we were really struggling on a ticket sales like no one was booking mm. uh, so much so like the week so I started the show on a Friday uh, maybe a third no on a Friday I started the show and like on the Monday there were maybe like you know 50 tickets sold for the weekend mm-hmm. for the three sh- the 900 sh- 900 tickets a week to sell right yeah because um, I was doing the show three times a week, the, the room's got 300 people. So the, the Monday before the first weekend, there was, I don't know, like 70 maybe tickets. And so I started shitting myself like, oh, great, I'm, uh, this is going to be awful. So the timing worked out that I put the, the first extracts of my first show 16 days in a row. Yeah. And uh, thanks to that and uh, also the press person that I work with, uh, what do you call that in English? PR, but press, press, pre- 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 whatever. Pu- pu- Public, Public relations, relations yeah. PR. Person. The person that, that calls up newspapers and says, yeah. "Hey, yeah. put a bit in about Paul." Yeah. So th- thanks to all of that, essentially the first weekend, um, we I, I think that it, 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 in, instead of nine hundred over the three days, we had maybe eight hundred and fifty. So it was close to being sold out, and then the, 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 the run, the whole run was sold out. So the thirty shows. Uh, that I did at the flow were sold out. So it was good. Like, I'm really happy about how many people showed up. I'm really happy about the reviews that they seem to really enjoy the show. Yeah. Um, but I do not. Uh, so what? that's kind of, I, I just, I don't like the show. I don't, really? I don't like what I don't. We I don't, could have told you that. I mean, to be honest, I mean, Paul is so negative about all of these <laughs> things. We could have told you they'd be like, oh, it's rubbish. I don't think it's, it's any good. You know, you know what? Like, um, so 
you know, I teach at the British Council. I have like, you know, adult students. Yeah, which was like a five minute, three minute walk from where I was performing. Yeah, that's right. I realised that the other day. Yeah, I did. I, I walked over the bridge and I looked over and there was there was the boat yeah. where you've been performing. I was like, oh, it's there. Right. Yeah, I had the same thing when I was driving to park next and I was like, oh, that's the British Council. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's where Luke teaches. So I, so I have students there at the moment. I'm teaching uh, B2 level and okay. uh, loads of my students uh, know about you and uh, like one of my students who's I think 18 19 years old or something um I don't know how she worked out that uh that I was friends with you okay but she was like oh, what like that uh you know really surprised and one of my students went to see the show a few of them did actually yeah and she um she listens to this podcast okay so that's a shout out to Tatiana hi Tatiana thanks for coming to the show she thanks came for spending your money to come and see me she came to see it and she loved it but she said that She'd heard everything before. She'd heard all your stories before and lots of the things you said before just from conversations that you've had on this podcast. Oh, probably. <laughs> yeah. Like, especially the story about you going out to get water for your daughter. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, and things like that. But a lot yeah, of other stuff... Yeah, they're less funny on the podcast I mean, than they are yeah, on, I mean, on you, stage. You just told them as stories on the podcast, but on stage, yeah. you know, you've turned them into comedy material. But yeah. uh, she said that she sort of had heard a lot of the... Yeah, uh, that's funny. A lot of the things that you talked about. If Tatiana is going to stalk Paul, I mean... That's really her own fault. She's ruining the comedy for herself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, if you do make the mistake of listening to this podcast, then you know only... <laughs> that's what Paul's comedy is. Show. It's like you know, turning the everyday events of your life, seeing the humour in what's actually happening. It's testimony to the fact that Paul is talking about his real life. Yes, exactly, exactly. It's the authenticity yeah. of it. So, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm generally happy, but I'm just I'm unhappy as a person globally Ev- always or just no and not always just like right now uh-huh. like the last six months of my life have just not been a happy place and i'm still not there yet but i'm 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 in the, in the unhappiness i'm happy that people are coming to the show and enjoying my unhappiness <laughs> in a way fair enough yeah i I, I just i so i was, I, was, I found an analogy of the show right like i the, with with the, with the title of the show and the topics that i wanted to talk about in the show for me, uh, it's very similar to the, to the game, to the TV show Countdown in the UK. Mm-hmm. Now, for those that don't know what Countdown is, I don't know if you've ever talked about it on the podcast. No. But essentially, it's a, it's a TV show, uh, like a game show, where there's two contestants and uh, they take turns in asking uh, the, one of the, the other people from the show to choose letters. So you've got nine letters and you choose either vowels or consonants. And then basically you're left with you know, nine letters which are a mishmash of different wo- uh, consonants and vowels and then you have 30 seconds to come up with the, the longest word you possibly can in the 30 seconds. So you can come up with a nine-letter word, you can come up with a seven. Usually people come up with sixes and sevens. Mm-hmm. On the very occasional, there's a nine and everyone's like, oh, well done. And so I see my show as like this mishmash of like nine words. I know there's a, I nine know there's a nine-word letter in there. Nine-letter word. A nine-letter word, sorry. Right. <laughs> My I know job. there's it's my job to a correct, nine, correct a, a nine word letter that would yeah. be weird. Anyway, I know there's a nine letter word in there, but I'm only able to produce like seven or eights, mm. which is enough for people to come to the show and enjoy it, and enough for people to to rave about it on 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 reviews and things like that. Mm-hmm. But I just know that there's something there's something else that, that I can do. Because every time, here's, here's how I know that is every time I'm on stage, and I didn't have this with the previous show. Uh, every time I'm on stage and I'm telling the stories or I'm telling the th- or the jokes, it, as I'm telling them, I'm like, for fuck's sake, Paul, this is such a shit joke. Like, Here we go a, again. There's a better thing. way. There's a better way yeah. I can do it. I know. I know exactly that feeling of like just starting way. a piece of material and then going, oh fuck, are we really going to do this yeah. again? And I, yeah. I have that. I have that multiple times during the show, but I just I don't have the time. And I don't have the mental capacity to sit down, listen to the recording. I just don't have the, the, the in French you would say the courage, like I don't have the mental... I just can't be asked. Yeah, a little bit. What's the, what's, how would you translate it? Je pas le courage, like I don't have the... You don't have enough energy. The will. I don't have yeah. the will to do it. You don't have the yes. willpower to do it. Yes. But I mean, the thing is, as we all know, the only way you, performance gets better is through performing. Yeah. And that's what's really tough for someone in your position because you don't have the luxury of just like doing you know just short little bits here and there here and there you know you had to produce a show and perform a show even Franglay changed during its performance you know even though you'd worked on separate bits really like quite a lot you were still working on the layout you know the nine letter word 
which is a great analogy, by the way, right up until the end and adding and changing and tweaking, even if it was just a word to make it kind of slicker. And, you know, it's normal that this show is still in its infancy, but um, you've done, I mean, we've not seen the show, have we, Luke? We kept trying to. Partly because there was a grev, come on, we couldn't get out of the house. grev, what's that? There was a strike. There's been a massive transport strike in Paris and it's very, uh, it's very complicated to sort of, talk about because on one hand it's been really shit and on the other hand we kind of like oh i know why you're doing it yeah but i still want to get to the shops yeah by the way a nine word letter would be dear john i do not love you anymore <laughs> yes no, that's a nine word that's a nine letter. word letter it's a little oh, letter because well, it's a letter like a letter that you're you know, all right I had to say yeah. that. Well, anyway, um, you, have you been trying to figure that out since yeah. I said it? <laughs> You've been on your I computer. Literally, just wrote it down. To anything that counted the words. <laughs> like they're talking about strikes. Okay, just to, how many? Uh, letters? Dear John, one, two. Um, so there's been yeah, there's been a massive strike in Paris for the last six, seven weeks. It started on the fifth of December. Okay, and and what this means, listeners. I mean, I've talked about it a little bit, but it's made life a bit difficult. I mean, we basically agree with the reason why the strikes are happening. Uh, but it does make life really, really complicated and difficult. For example... But that's school- the whole point in a strike, really. Yeah, exactly. So they, yeah. they've done what they set out to do. Uh, your, your son's school has been closed a lot of the time, so you've had to, like... Awful. It must be awful. You had to spend time to spend with your time own son. With my own son. Uh, yeah, basically. He is very upset that the grev is finished. He's uh. like, what? Because it wasn't just, it was two things. Sometimes the teachers were on strike. They supported because, you know, they, they're, you know, government workers. Civil you know, servants. Civil servants. Um, and sometimes they weren't on strike, but they couldn't get to school because there was no transport Transport. because they live in the suburbs. But it has meant that he has just not been at school. He's just been at home a lot. Right. Have you been educating him? I have. We've been learning to read in English. Really? Yes. Ah, great. Uh, Jolly phonics. What are you reading? Uh, Well, we're just working on sounds at the moment, but he can can read small words. Phonics, right? Mm. What's all that about then? Well, it's, you know, when when you you're sort of teaching the sound rather than the letter so you don't sort of say a b c you sort of it's a ah, b k you know that kind yeah, of stuff yeah. um so that they can sound out the words and then read them it's basically how to uh decode uh the the lack of relationship between english spelling and english pronunciation for kids isn't it yeah because like learners of english read our words like you know all of our french friends who read words uh, written in english and they pronounce them totally wrong because they've got you know there's no way for them to know that you don't pronounce that letter or these letters or like if you're saying through yeah. that the the uh, the like half the letters aren't even pronounced yeah. Yeah. so like phonics is like helping kids to learn that when you get these letters together they're probably going to be pronounced like this exactly yeah. like if you've got two letters like because he's just starting it sort of if there's um, an I and an E mm-hmm. next to each other mm-hmm. then the I becomes I rather than I you know, that kind of stuff. Oh, or if it's, it's an like O and an A together, then the O becomes O rather than... You wouldn't say O-A. Oh, oh, ah. You say yeah. O, like goat. Like go- th- o- t- goat or throat. It's O-A. It's like O. Yeah. Becomes O. So the, so the first letter says its name. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. O is O. Oh, but with, get, it's, not, with the he... A, it then becomes O. o. When it's, it's joined by oat. another one, it uses the name of that. Oh God, this is so complicated. But yeah, um, yeah no, I understand. I Stuff like that. Hey, is he, how's he getting on with French? Is he reading? They don't French. read French yet. Really? So they start looking at the letters and stuff like that in in Grand section, which is okay. where he is, the last year of Maternelle. But then next year they start to read. So he's already reading in English. He's six. He's five, but he'll be six soon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought, for some reason, I thought kids learned to read at like four. I don't no. know why I had that in my mind. No, they learn I, a little I, bit. I've got no idea of timeline apart from my timeline, which is the, seven yeah. months. The start of the, si- the timeline, basically. Yeah, basically. And, and the only reason I know anything about the time is, is that now that she's in creche, uh, the baby. Your daughter. Yeah. She, like, they're like, she's way too in advance. She's in advance. It's unbelievable. We don't know what's going on. What, she, like, she is. Wait, 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 wait. What, 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 what? what? That your daughter is advanced. They're, they keep telling yeah, like, c- c- you that she's advanced. Yeah. But, uh, we have no idea because we've what's never had she kids doing? before. What's she she's doing? She's standing up. She's oh. standing up on her own. I thought you meant she was like on Snapchat or something. <laughs> 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 she's doing a PhD next week. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's, she's like, she, first of all, because, and, and the, like, we know 
Com- there's two other kids in the crash that are v- about the same age, like one or two weeks difference than her, and they're just like vegetables lying yeah. on the floor. They do nothing, yeah. and they're just they all the whole. And she it does not stand still. You put her on the floor on her back, f- straight o- onto her stomach, and she's off. She's crawling off, and she's on the bookshelves, standing, pulling herself up, pulling books off the yep. shelves. Yep, um, sounds very, very, very familiar. Exactly what. Yeah, Alice she's only seven doing. months. Yeah, Not even, she's six months. Because a lot of babies don't learn to crawl till they're ten, at least ten months. That's what we've heard. Yeah. And like start walking around. And even if they start walking around one, that's still quite... Yeah. Uh, well, not, the, the, that's the about woman right. The, the woman at the crash was like, I think she'll be walking by, she, by the time she's nine months. It was like, we were like, okay, cool. I don't know. We don't know if that's a, early or not. Because we, you know, when we... When, you, when we met... When we met your daughter for the first time, uh, Luke, I think... <laughs> you can say my name. <laughs> That's fine. No, I was just trying to, because like, when I said it, I was like, that's not clear that I was speaking to you because I'm pointing at you, but no one can see that I'm pointing at you. So Luke, when we met your daughter for the first time, I don't, I don't remember how old she was, but you know when you don't have a kid mm-hmm. yet, mm-hmm. you don't know what the timeline is. You don't know what timeline... There's no frame of reference for no, children. No, because every time we'd see people's kids, our friends' kids, they'd always be... Um, at different ages, but I don't even remember now. You know, we're like, oh, but when we saw uh, Romy for the first time, how old was she? Because she was wa- she was crawling, but we and so we're trying to go over, and we just we had no idea. So yeah, yeah. like it's it, the timeline of stuff is really. I, I mean, it's it's it's, it's different for everyone because uh, our daughter started sort of standing up around yeah around the same time, but she didn't walk until about eleven months. Right. Um, what about uh, Hugo? Well, he he didn't crawl till he was around ten months, and then he walked at twelve months. Yeah, okay. so it went very quickly. But it was pretty early still, or was that normal? No, that's normal. Oh, okay. I don't think it's particularly early. I mean, my right. neighbour downstairs, her daughter, she's like yours. She's crawling. She's like sort of six months. And I mean, but my, my friend, she's just like it's just the rage because she's so rage. angry. Yeah, who? she oh the, the little baby. girl, the baby. Wait, like you can hear sorry, her. Whose baby? Sorry. It's my friend who lives, who used to live downstairs. Yeah. And we'd hear her, like I'd be, I'd have a podcast on, I'd be listening to stuff and I'd hear this like, like <laughs> what is that noise? And it was this baby. I mean, she was furious. Wow. Anyway, so she was like, it's the rage pushing her forward. Um, our, our theory is that we're so incompetent that she's like, these, pe- these two are, <laughs> are so incompetent. I need to get the fuck out of this house the quick, <laughs> as quickly as possible. So that's why she's, <laughs> she's moving so quickly. Question for you, Paul. Yeah. He said, pointing at Paul. Yeah. Um, does your daughter still cry all the time? Um, no. So that's got a lot better. So she, doesn't, she doesn't cry. She whinges, but that's just normal. Like Most of the time she's smiling. Uh, yeah, it's, it, that's got a lot better. Um, so isn't it not nice and fun to spend time with her then? Um, it's never that fun to spend time with a baby, Luke. Let's be serious. Oh, every, me and Addy always go back to what you used to say, Amber. You're like, it's fucking boring. <laughs> so yeah, no, boring. No, it's, it's, it's it fun. Is, yeah. it's, it's fun, but very f- for, for like 10 minutes. And then it's, it just becomes... It could, it's, it's fun for the first... When she wakes up, so she's super happy, smiling, 10 minutes, and she's calm. She stays in your arms. Mm-hmm. She smiles. Mm-hmm. We give her kisses. It's great. And then after about 10 minutes, she's on the floor crawling somewhere. So then you have to just be behind her the whole time yeah. so that she's not pulling, like, the wrong cable. She's not, you know, she's, she wants to hassle the cats. Uh, you know, she's climbing, like, on the, on the sofa with her hands, and then she'll fall back and crack her head. So we have to, like, be behind her the whole time. And that's okay for... A couple of minutes, but then it just becomes, it's just really just, t- mentally draining. It's quite stressful as well of like constantly chasing <clears throat> your kid around like, oh, you know, like trying to stop them falling over. You know, you'll see when she starts walking, that's going to be the thing. Yeah. You're but, like going around like a, like a goalkeeper, you know, or like holding your hands around her head all the time. Yeah. But then it gets, it gets worse. Like the other day, <laughs> <laughs> so it gets better. Don't have, don't have kids, everyone. <laughs> no, but it idea. gets worse. Like, I, I can't remember who I was with, but like, um, they were offering something to my son and they sort of said to him, oh, do you want like this or like this? Or, you know, they gave him all the options. You know, they really made sure Never they Never give a child options. No, 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 no. And it's because like toddlers, you know, when they start to talk, they're so mental. She'll be like, um, you know, oh, can I have some milk? And you'll be like, okay, great. You'll get the milk and you'll put it in the yellow cup and forget about it. 
she wanted the red cup. You just assumed yellow was the colour. And then you'll just like lose it. And like my son's still like that. Like you give him the wrong thing. Yeah. or You've cut something up wrong or you've put the peas next to the pasta and it's just, oh. it's all over. And they just absolutely <laughs> lose their shit, don't absolutely they, in that situation? Absolutely lose it. Really? And you're just like, yeah. oh God. So you end up, you find yourself there with a really small child being like, and would you like the yellow cup? And shall I fill it up to the top? And shall I put it down next to you? Or shall I hand it to you? And you're just, you're just walking on eggshells. Yeah, exactly. The whole time. Or you, yeah, you're walking on eggshells because they're going to lose it. But also you're kind of like getting more and more stressed out because it's like, for Christ's sake, it doesn't matter yeah. if it's yellow or red. Just eat the fucking food. I can imagine. <laughs> you, obviously, you can't. Stage, obviously, you don't say that. Of course. Sometimes, sometimes I do. <laughs> because right now I'm the, I'm, I'm the one who, who I'm so impatient. So I get annoyed quickly, whereas Addie's got the patience now. Yeah. But I think when she gets to that stage, it's going to flip. I'm going to become more patient. <laughs> and Addie's going to fucking lose it with her friends. I'm like, putain, mais mange sa merde, on s'en fout, putain. And she'll get really angry. Yeah. She's like, I can... I... <laughs> Yesterday, we had a conversation. Sorry, I'm just going to... Mm. Fill- mm-hmm. this, like, because some someone on the um, facebook like a mum's group was talking about swearing and how uh-huh. like she was like oh you know we shouldn't really swear and i swear quite a lot um and i also swear in front of my son and the other day we were walking back from the park and he said oh you know oh it, oh bullshit you know yeah. and i was like darling that's um that's not right we say bullshit when we don't think someone's telling the truth <laughs> we say no, oh, that's that's like, that's bullshit. I don't believe you. What you mean to say is shit. Um, yeah. You know, you've you've lost your toy. Shit, not bullshit. It's yeah. just it's wrong. I can't have you. You can swear, but at least do it in the right you context. Can swear, yeah. but please, <laughs> yeah. please use bullshit you can, as you're supposed you to. You can wait for the comments on this episode, Amber. You're going to get hammered. You're going to get flamed. <laughs> I know. On <laughs> online, I, I got I got a massive comment on one of my YouTube videos because I start with bonjour, dickheads. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So the way Someone Paul could... starts, if you haven't seen his videos, ladies and gents, yeah, I, mean, I'll, I'll stick I, I, of... I just don't know how to start. When I hit record on my camera, yeah. I don't know how to be like, hi, everyone. It just, <laughs> I, so I just, it happened one time. I was just it's, like, oh, bonjour, dickheads. It's, it's great. I was in a bad mood and it just stuck. And so I got a comment on one of these things because one of the videos, like Louise was, I, it, yeah, I, I wasn't showing her face, but yeah. she, she, was uh, she, she was there. And you, I'm like, you, you two were on the floor. You were like lying on the floor with Louise. She was crawling around, and you're kind of like looking after her and making sure she making sure she doesn't like sort of uh, roll over and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and uh, and somebody left a comment being like, "Oh, you know, you should some like person because you swear in front of her." Yeah, yeah. Because I, I was just like, "Oh, bonjour, dickheads. Welcome to another episode. Blah yeah, blah blah. Yeah. Today I'm hanging. Whatever the thing was." And somebody was like, 99% of people were like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if Louise's first words were bonjour dickheads? That'll be funny. (laughs) You know, people taking it like, you know, not seriously. And then some person was just, I don't know, were just too serious leaving a comment being like, yeah, it's actually really bad for kids because blah, blah, blah. You know, going into like real detail, like psychological detail things. I'm just like, it's it's part of who I am. mm. Like my mum brought me up like that. My parents swore. And yeah, yeah, okay, I don't have the best vocabulary and I swear a lot, but it's just who I am. The thing about swearing is I think you know and kids will learn like we all learn that there is a right and a wrong time to do it Mm -hmm. and that's the thing like when you're with your friends in this situation when you're talking to your audience on YouTube on your your vlog you know it's a very personal sort of informal thing and we do swear in those situations and you know Hugo's gonna grow up knowing that you don't use swear words in a business meeting usually you know, he's going to know. Of course. I mean, children understand about register. They understand yeah. about when, where you use things. But then I, I said something the other day and he was just like, that's a, that's a, a chromo. And told me to use something else. Oh, so he's like getting on your back telling you not to swear. Yeah, good. He told, I said, oh, for fuck's sake. And he said, oh, that's <gasps> a, gr- it's a gros mot. You can say, oh, dear. Un gros mot is a, in French a for big, like a, a, bad, swear a bad word. word. It's, a bad it's word. a fat word. It's a fat word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a fat word. Now, guys, I, I'm planning this year to do a series of episodes about raising bilingual kids, raising kids to be bilingual. I think uh-huh. it's a big enough subject for us to need for me to ring fence it. And talk about it later. Ring fence? No, yeah. I don't know what that means. You don't know what ring, ring fencing, fencing is? Well, I mean, I can, I can picture what it means is like isolating it yeah. from a, as a topic. Yeah, so ring, yeah. to ring fence something is to Im- imagine putting like a metal meshed ring fence around something, you know, to, to yeah, isolate it. So basically the topic of bilingual children is something I'm going to come back to and I do okay. plan to talk to you both. It's about the subject. Topic. There's so much to say about yeah. it, isn't there? Yeah. So I think we're going to move away from the topic of children and all that stuff. And yeah. uh, well, 
<laughs> actually, what else is there? I've just realised there's not much left. Um, but I think we should do another episode now. Are you okay with that? Yeah. 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 Listeners, I mean, you know, the next one will be the rest of... Well, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's so hard to speak, you know? You'll be able to hear that in the next episode, listeners, because we're going to record it now. And then I'll upload... You know, you know the way this works, don't you? I record stuff and then I put it on the internet... <laughs> And then you listen to it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, good. It's good to catch up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wandered into your wonderland. So that was Catching Up with Amber and Paul, number nine. I hope you enjoyed that. Check out the page for this episode on the website to see pictures of a porch, a veranda, a terrace, a patio, a balcony, and a conservatory so that you can work out what's really going on with those words. I wonder if you have one of those features on your home or in the garden, maybe. So you heard there us talking about recording another episode, and we did. So the next episode will also feature Amber and Paul again, and it's going to be the return of... Something that we've done on the podcast before, and we're going to do it again. That's right, it's The Lion Game. So there's a full Lion Game episode coming up next on the podcast. That should arrive in the next few days. Um, And let's see what's been going on. What's been going on? So recently I uploaded episodes 300 and... Uh, 39, 38 and 37 and that was the quintessentially British things and I'm very happy with the responses I've had to the last three episodes about quintessentially British things I've had lots of comments about Mum's Book Club or Jill's Book Club it seems that there's quite a lot of enthusiasm for that so I've been talking to my mum about it and we might be able to do some fairly regular episodes in which we talk about three books or other works of art because mum is also into theatre, galleries, exhibitions, cinema and stuff like that. So watch this space. That should happen at some point. What should I call those episodes? Episodes where I'm talking to my mum about books or other bits of art or culture. What should I call those episodes? Should I call them Jill's Book Club? Shall I use her name? Because my dad uses his name in his episodes in the Rick Thompson report, so maybe I should be using my mum's name too. Or should it be Mum's Book Club? Um, Or should we call it like Culture Club as well, because it's going to include other things? And Culture Culture Club was also a band, wasn't it? Or maybe something else. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Um, What else? I've been working really hard on a mammoth series about grammar for Luke's English Podcast Premium. It's all about articles. That's A and the and no article. So if you ever struggle to know how to use articles properly, should I be using a, uh, an, the, nothing? How do I even pronounce them? If you ever struggle to use articles in English, then uh, this is for you. Uh, This is a particularly tricky aspect of English grammar, and I've had plenty of requests for it, so I've been slaving away, consulting various grammar books, coming up with loads of real examples. We're using extracts from interviews with the Beatles in this series, seeing how John, Paul, George and Ringo have used articles in interviews, and using that as a way to learn this grammar. Also, I've been looking through various grammar books for all the rules, Um, Long story short, I have a long and very detailed look at articles for LEP Premium, which should already be published uh, if you're listening to this. Either all of it has been published or part of it has been, and it will also include the usual test and pronunciation drills. I expect that will be, you know, a multi-part episode series. Anyway, check it out at teacherluke.co.uk slash premium but now for this episode that is it thank you for listening and stay tuned for the next episode which should arrive in a few days but for now it's just time to say goodbye bye 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 Thanks for listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk.